Video On Demand now open to pro members. Um, they are offering 90% of the revenue to producers, although the pro membership does cost $190 a year. Uh, do you view this as a viable revenue stream for indie producers moving forward? And overall, uh, what do you see as the pros and cons of Vimeo On Demand? Well, uh, I don't think that a $200 a year is detrimental. If it's that detrimental to you, you're really in the wrong area. Filmmaking is going to be overwhelmingly expensive for you. There, maybe you should try painting, or writing poetry, or photography, or something that's not as expensive, because $200 is not that much for distribution uh, yourself. It does not answer anything to the uh, traffic, driving traffic to your page, you know, to, to getting the revenue. It's the same problem you would have on iTunes, on Netflix, on Amazon VOD, on Hulu, any of those other things that having access to the platform is great. Having no audience, not knowing who is going to go there and get them to come to your page and buy is a universal problem, you know, and this is, this new tool is not going to solve that. You know, they aren't necessarily curating. I mean, they do have staff picks and things like that, which is helpful. But staff can't pick every film, <laughs> you know, so if you happen to get that great, you know, recommendation that can lead to a bump in sales, but that still doesn't absolve you from the responsibility of having to, to get drum up that audience and drive them to your page. Now, I, I would suppose that the pro page has insights where you can see the analytics and where the traffic is coming from. I don't know if in the payment scheme they give email addresses because it's new, so I, I don't know what's happening with that, but that would be helpful, you know, for you to be able to see, okay, if I run a Facebook campaign and I drive the traffic to Vimeo, which is a known platform, and I can see the dashboard behind it to see whether what I'm doing is making an impact. That's way different than what you do when you send people to iTunes or to Hulu because they keep the analytics. You don't have access to that. So uh, the difference to me, the, the competition is not really with Vimeo um, and iTunes or Vimeo with Netflix. It's Vimeo with a VHX, a Distrify, a Dynamo player, any of those other tools where you can um, have the film on your website and stream from your website and, and for a fee because um, Vimeo is known and your website may not be known. So people who are used to going to Vimeo, just like they're used to going to iTunes, you know, to, to get entertainment, they're used to going to Vimeo to see films and shorts and all that kind of stuff. So that gives you access to a bigger pool of people who are used to going to a site rather than the pool of people who just go to your own site. But the good thing is it's non-exclusive, so you can have it in both places. So if you're driving traffic, you can drive it to both places. Um, you know, obviously from your own website, there will be a percentage that you have to pay to whoever is uh, hosting your film in the first place as that tool um, unless you're selling it via PayPal or something where you've set up your own system and you aren't going through another hosting service but uh, Vimeo I think is going to be a good tool for that 90-10 I don't know anybody who's giving a 90-10 split but the challenge is still getting them there make you know getting them to pay uh, that that doesn't change just because because Vimeo is now offering pay for purview rather than free.